stop what you're doing and take a moment to see my second tutorial on training neural networks. So the first one was like the simplest example I could think of. And on this one, I'm just taking it a step up further to show you a you know, next step up in complexity. So here on my omarvision.com website, I have the setup ML agents on your computer. This is a five minute video. And then here I have the simplest training that I could think of, which is just move to the right. And now I'm gonna make a second one. This one is like how to move toward a target and a target could be placed randomly and the cube's always gonna learn how to move to the target. So it's running in high speed and you can see these are like almost fully trained. They almost never fall off the floor and almost always hit their target. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna do it together from scratch, okay? So let me stop this and let's start up a new Unity project. All right, so let's go to Unity Hub and let's create a new project. We'll just call it Move Target. All right, let me just save my scene. This is the blank scene starting off with. Save as scenes. I'll call it the same thing, Move Target. And now I can start. So I have this scene. I'm going to add in. I'm going to create the first scenario. So let me just create an empty game object, call it scenario. Scenario. And in there, I'll put a floor. OK, and I'll just size that up a little, six, six, and move it down by one. Then I'll also put a cube. This will be the agent. So I'll call this my agent. Oh, and I'll call the floor floor. And then I'll put a target board for the agent to go toward, and I'll just size it differently, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, make the height 2 so it sticks out. Okay, so now let's give them some colors, materials, floor, and put that on the floor, and let's make one for the agent, and make that orange, okay, and then make one for the target, get blue, and I'll just put the target somewhere random. Let's get these tagged, so I think I have to have two tags, floor, and target. So the floor, give it the tag, and the target, give it the tag, target. Now let me start making sure that this could run with ML agents. So to run with ML agents here in Unity, I need to install the ML agent package. So I'll go to package manager and I'll look for packages in Unity, period. Here's ML agents and here's the install button. Okay, so now I have the ML agent package installed as a check mark there. And over here in packages, you can see that ML agents is there. Now that the ML agent package is there, I could actually create an agent script. So I just start by creating a regular C sharp script. Okay, I'm gonna call it move target. And then when I open the script, I'm gonna um, derive it off of the agent class instead of mono behavior. So when you create a new script, it starts off as a mono behavior, but we're gonna make it an agent. So let's see, over here we're gonna have to use using unity.ml agents. So we could have the agents class. And then over here we could derive off of agents. So agents, um, Agent still derives off of um, mono behavior, so you still have the functions from mono behavior, but you're also going to have new functions. So let's see, you go to definition, you're going to have new functions like these here. I'm going to cut out this and this, and let me start typing my code. So, for example, the first thing I want is I just want to make a move speed for my cube, and then I'm going to provide overrides for some of the functions that the agent class has. So I say public override, and I could just use a smart text to find initialize. Okay, so this is going to override the initialize of agent, and then we're going to write our own stuff. So we want to know three things. So um, we're going to want to know private um, vector three, the original position of the cube when the game starts, private, let's see, bounds, the bounds for the floor, so we know when we're coming off the floor, and then private game object target, okay, equals null. Now here, we'll get the original and we'll set it. Z. And we're going to know what the bound floor is. So the bound floor, you can see it over here in the scenario. Here's my agent, and then scenario is the parent. So I'm going to go up to the parent scenario, and then from the scenario, I'm going to find the floor. So bound floor is going to equal this.transform parent to go up to the parent. And then from the parent's transforms, I'm going to find the game object named floor. When I find that, I'll need the game object of the floor to get the component, the renderer, component, dot bounds. Then that gives me the bounds. Okay, then the target is gonna equal dot transform, dot parent, dot parent transform, find target. 
and I'll get the game object of that. Bam. Now I'm going to override another function from the agent class, public override. Um, it's the episode begin. So the training happens in episodes. And when an episode begins, I want to set the position of my agent. Okay. Second thing I want to do when an episode begins is I want to randomly place the target. So I'll just call a function for that. I'll make one. Private void random place target. So first I'll get a random value for the x. So random range will go from bound floor dot min dot x to bound floor dot max dot x. Then I'll do the same thing for a random z value. And then with those random r, x, and y, then I'll set the target dot transform dot position equal to that rx, it's on zero, and rz. All right, so every time an episode starts, I'm going to have a random rx and rz. Pick the agent, and then drag the move target agent script on here. So what happens is I have the move target script right here, and when this gets dropped on, since it's an agent script, it'll add a behavior parameters ML agent component. Okay, the um, behavior parameters ML agent component, this is information about it's going to say how many values I'm feeding into the neural network and how many values I want to come out of the neural network. Discrete values are whole numbers that will come out, and continuous values are floats, float values that will come out of the neural network. And um, talking about neural network, I'll just draw, see this picture here that this is like a visual diagram of a sample neural network. And the neural network has layers, and the information travels from, the, from one side to the other. Here, the first nodes, the first nodes, these are where you put in observation values. Then the nodes in the middle here, there could be one or there could be many. These are the nodes where the neural network actually does its learning by adjusting the weights on all of the connections from the nodes. And then on the, the last nodes of the neural network, th these are the output values. This is, trans this is the result of the translation of the information that came in. It gets translated to values on the side out. So for us, we're going to actually have two values on the out because we want to know how far to move on the z and how far to move on the x. Those are the two actions the cube could take. OK, so back here, um, here I just changed this to a 2. Now, we don't know what we're going to tell the cube about the environment, not yet. So let's think about how we could add something in there. Well, before I add something in there, um, let's name the, the behavior parameter something like move target. <laughs> OK. So the name I put there, that's going to be the name of the file that it makes. That's going to be like the brain file, the neural network file, after it's trained. And then here is where we would put the neural network model file, and we would define it right here. OK, so let's see. What should we do next? Um, let's add a decision requester and an action received method. So here in the script again, the move target script, the agent script, we overrode initialize and on episode begin. We're going to override another function override from the agent class the on action received event. And this is where we get the values from the neural network over here, the two values. The first value we're going to use to translate our game object on the x. So that'll be vector 3 dot right. That's the x axis times the vector action, which is a value that goes from minus 1 to 1 times the move speed times time tell the time. Now I'll do the same thing for the z-axis, vector 3 dot forward. And this time we'll use the second um, float that gets returned from the neural network. So how you use the floats and the output, it's up to you. But that's how you wind up giving them meaning, is how you use them here in the on action received. So all right, so the cube's going to be moving around. And then over here, back in the script here, we're going to have to ask the ML agent library or the brain to make a decision for us. So there's a component in ML agents called the decision requester. So you can just add that on. And this is going to keep requesting from the brain, like, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do now? So right now, if I were to run this, nothing's going to move because I have to run the ML agent library still. So I'm going to press stop. And I'm going to show you how to start up the ML agent library that I installed previously. Let me just go here to more vision. You're going to have to like look at this video and do this so that you have the ML agent library installed on your system. Now I have it installed on my system and I also installed Anaconda. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up my Anaconda Navigator so I could open a terminal. Now Anaconda Navigator, oh gosh, it's just a tool. 
to run Python since ML Agents is a Python um, project. So first I'm going to click on the environment I made. It's basically like the ML Agents six, release 16 project. And then I click to open up a terminal. I'm going to use the library to train the brain file. So let me just get a path from Unity and copy that address path. And then go to the ML Agents library and type the command CD for change directory and control V to paste the path of my game. All right, that way the output will be files here. I can type CLS to clear the screen. ML Agents learn is a command to start the library. So right now it's just listening on the port. So now I'll go to Unity again. And Unity, when I press play, this agent class is gonna communicate on that port. And now the cube's moving randomly. And sometimes it comes off the floor and it totally disappears. So since it moves off the screen, let's give it its first observation. Um, to try to move toward the target. So we're gonna give the cube basically eyes. So I'm gonna click on my agent and there's another ML agent component that I could use for that to give my agent eyes. It's called the ray perception sensor. And I have a 3D one that I'm gonna use here since I'm in a 3D project. And now it shoots out these rays. This is my cube looking in the directions that the rays are. And you can see one of the cubes here hits the target. Okay, and therefore you can see it turn red. So let's call this ray perception sensor, sensor for the target. Okay, the sensor is going to look for the target. So in order for me to tell it what to look for here in the detectable tags, I'm going to add the tag for target. Now, I don't want the rays really to go that far. I want them to stay within this little scenario. And I need more rays so I can go around the whole thing to see in all the directions. I could also spread the rays out. And I could add more rays per section. So the more rays I add, the better its visibility is of what it's near. But you can see like... Yeah, this looks good because it looks like for whatever it is, it's always going to sense the target. So let's say we added, how many do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So on the input for our behavior parameters, the observations, there's 11 observations. There's 11 rays. This other value, the stacked vectors, this gives it a sense of um, motion or time. If I just looked at the rays at one moment at a time. I don't really get a sense of which way the cube is moving, but I want the neural network to know which way something's moving. So here I could add um, a sense of history for the motion. I'm going to put a five. All right, so my behavior parameters are set up. My neural network is going to have 11 inputs and two outputs. Here, this little warning says that since there's no brain here, there's no brain file here, it's going to actually communicate here with the ML agent library. Oh, before I start up the library, sorry. Let me go back to the code. Very, very essential in training, other than giving your game object like senses, is punishment and reward. So I'm going to go back to the script, and I have to think about when do I want to reward the cube and when do I want to punish it. So I reward it when it does something that I want it to do. So I'm going to reward it when it touches the target, because that's what I want it to learn how to do, touch the target. So I'm going to add private void on collision enter if collision dot game object dot compare tag to target equals true i will end the episode okay and end episode is a command from the agent class i will also add reward a value of one so positive values are actually a reward negative values are actually like a punishment now when am i going to punish it when am i going to punish it first let me start by saying i'm going to punish it if it goes off the floor so if it's moving around and it goes past the floor, we're going to have to stop and restart it again because basically we'll say it failed. So we'll make a function here when the action's received. We'll do a bounds check, bounds check to see if it's still within the bounds of the floor. Okay, and here we'll write the function void bound check. And all we'll do is we'll just check for each axis if it's still within the range of the floor. Dot measure that x is less than bound floor dot min x. And we'll add reward of a minus, and then we'll make this very small value, 0.1f. So when you're playing around, you're going to have to like really play with these values to see how fast the training comes out. But for the reward, that's I added like one. And for little punishments, they're just little punishments like slaps on the wrist. So I just add a minus 0.1. And then I'll have to end the episode so I could start another training episode. Now let me just type the rest of it. The first time I typed um, ML agents learn, and it's going to the bring file move target. But now I'm going to run it a second time. So I could either resume training on that same brain file, or I could force it to start training 
from scratch. So I'm going to use the force. As long as I see this unity symbol and listening on port 5004, now I just start play over here and it should go through the training. Every time I see the target move, it's another session that it trained. So um, the only thing I got to think about is how is the training going? So I'm going to display something for myself to see how the training's going. When I press stop in Unity, the ML Agent library also stops. OK, so to display how the training's going, I'm just going to add a UI text here so I could see the numbers, UI text. I'm going to call it text debug. I'm going to drag the event system in the canvas. OK, there. Now I'm going to need a class so I could um, talk to it. I'm just going to make a globals class, which is a static. And let me open that up and just put in the code. All right, so it's a static class. It's not driving off my behavior. I'll need some variables, public, static, int episode equals zero, public static, int success equals zero, fail equals zero. And then I want pointer private text debug equals null. OK, then I'll have a function. Now the success percent, I just want the format to string zero. Now in my agent script, initialize and episode begin. Every time an episode begins, the globals.episode count will go up. So I know how many episodes I have gone through. Every time uh, there is a win, the reward, my globals.success count will go up. And every time there's one of these fails, my globals.fail count will go up. Once here, copy, V, V, control V. Let's call the screen text. Let's call it every time there's an action received. Globals.screen text. ML agents learn force. And there you go. And is it listening yet? And over here, let's start the playback. And there you go. It's failing like crazy because it's not detecting the touches. I forgot. If you're going to have touching going on, you need a rigid body. So let's add a rigid body. And let's turn off gravity. Don't spin and don't come off the ground. And now, I'll try it again. File, save, ML agents, learn, force, and play. And now we're getting successes and failures. And this is just one agent training. And you can see how many episodes it goes through per second. So I can increase the speed of training by just duplicating the scenario. Okay, to speed up the training, I'm going to do a couple of things. I am taking the scenario and I'm duplicating it since each of the scenarios the agent talks to the same brain name, move target, they'll all train the same brain. What I'm going to do is I'll make uh, one, two, five, six, seven, I'll make nine of them. So let me double click the prefab. I want to make sure I'm going to use the GPU since I'm using my computer that has uh, NVIDIA Geofork, Geoforce. So on the behavior parameters here, I could change the device to GPU from CPU and that should help it go a little bit faster too. All right, let me make sure I take off the previous brain that I was using on here. So again, only can use GPU if you have a computer with a graphics card. So this laptop of mine has a graphics card, so it's going to work. All right, so now I'm going to try the training again. So let's clear the screen and ML agent learn. And I will force it to start from a new brain. Now I will press play. So when it starts off, the percentage of success to fail, it's usually, it's just random. It usually takes a while to see if the training picks up and is worked. So you can see here the fail count is growing faster than the success count and it also it's higher than the success count i'll probably stop when the success count is about twice as high as the fail count then i'll be good enough so i could train it to close to 100 percent where it, it almost always you know finds its way to the target successfully or if i don't want it to be that smart i could kind of stop it at some points in between so it's definitely getting smarter with all the um episodes it's going through in training let's see what happens with a little bit more time. All right, now at about 8,000 episodes, I can see that the successes definitely outnumber the fails, and there are still some fails. So I'm going to stop it here, my training. So now the brain that was created, if I look here, when I press stop, the um, here the ML agents thing stopped. And here I could see that all the brain files, the ONNX files, those are the neural network files, they're created. It tells me where it created them. Or I could just go here into Unity, open up my scenario, my um, scenario prefab, go to the agent, and here in the model, I could just pick a brain from my project. Since I did have my brain called move target, it would be this one is the latest one that got created. And now with the brain selected for my prefab, I'm going to see the brain being used now to give commands to the cubes. Each cube has a brain now. It didn't start up the ML agent. Now I just use Unity by itself with the brain file, and the cubes are moving on their own accord. 
You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.